Okay, we'll just get started. Um, if more people join, just catch up. Um, so, no more. Thank you for coming. Um, feel free to turn on your camera at any time. So it's just easier for me to get the feedback uh, if you guys following through or if you have any questions. Um, so yeah, so that's the second uh, session of uh, full stack development. Uh, today we'll be doing the back end. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me anytime. Uh, I might be going a little bit fast, so just feel free to feel free just to stop me and ask any questions. And also feel free to write any messages in the chat. Uh, Ilya will be more than happy uh, to read them to me in case I don't catch them. Uh, so let's just start with a quick theoretical review. Uh, let me share the screen. Can you all see? Okay, perfect. Okay, great. So, full stack development, uh, session number two on uh, the back end. So, the general session outline today, we kind of do four things. We'll talk a little bit about REST API. I'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about Express and ORM, and then we'll just do the live coding and we actually build the backend uh, for our application. And then once we get to the live coding, I kind of, I'll detail more what exactly we'll be building today uh, and what routes we'll be working on. So API, uh, so what is API? So definition is API is just an application programming interface, but that's kind of abstract, doesn't make a lot of sense. So imagine you you go to the restaurant. So you go, for example, to Sate, and then you sit down, uh, the waiter comes in, gives you the menu, uh, and then you choose different, you, you, you choose what you want. Then you communicate that to the waiter, which then transmits that message to the kitchen where your food is being prepared. And then you get the food back and you eat it. So essentially that's what API is. Uh, you make some sort of request, then you have a messenger, which in our case is a waiter. The request is being transmitted uh, to some sort of sort of place or like where the business logic is being run, for example, on a server. And in our case, that would be a kitchen. Then the business logic is being run. And then the data that is returned is what the user gets back. Um, so the easy, easiest way to kind of look at APIs is uh, from the example. So look at the GitHub example. So in the first session, we were creating the GitHub issues and we were just kind of going on the interface and we're just saying new issue and then creating the new issue. You also could, could do it through the API. So through your command line or through the postman. Uh, so for example, if you want to create the issue, um, we can find the create issue, create an issue. So that will be a post request, which is essentially, there are four main methods uh, in API post, which is creation, and then get, which is retrieval, uh, put is modification, and then patch is also modification, and then also delete, delete, which is essentially uh, deleting. So here, for example, if you want to create the issue for your project, you can send a post request uh, to your repos, so essentially all your repositories, then you have to specify some sort of parameter, what, what repository you're creating it in. In this case, accepting two parameters, the owner, which is essentially going to be you, and then the repo name. Um, and then they also add the issues. So essentially this will send a post request to the repos, your, your name as an owner, and then the repo name and uh, slash issues. And that will create the issue at the board the same way we created um, using the button on the interface. If we want, for example, to retrieve that issue, uh, we can use the get request. So we can, for example, list all repository issues. Then we will send the get request to the repos. We'll sp sp specify the owner again, which is us. And then we can sp specify the repo again, which is the repo we create the issue in. So that's kind of that's kind of the idea. You create and then you you get the resources uh, from the API, and you can also update and delete them. Um, does that make sense in terms of what is just basic idea of what an API is?
Okay. Um, so if that makes sense, uh, no questions. Let's kind of jump in into the two technologies we'll be using today. Uh, so first one is Express. Uh, so Express is essentially the, the architect that's uh, kind of architecturing our entire backend server. So if we go back to our example with the ordering in the restaurant and uh, with the waiter, so Express in this case would serve to some extent as the waiter. So you'll give waiter the order and then waiter will tell you if they have uh, that particular dish today or not. And if they don't, they can tell you, hey, like we don't have this dish, you have to try something else. That's essentially what Express does. When you send the request and you say, I want this food, the Express will tell you, hey, we don't have that food today. You have to order something else. So it's essentially just a stack of bunch of functions that are executed in an order. Uh, and you can see kind of a diagram, the request is coming in and then you have a bunch of middle words, um, which is essentially functions. Uh, that are doing some sort of logic or operations on the request that you're trying to, uh, that, you, that you send. And then once that logic is performed, it actually gives you back the response, uh, which is on the right. Uh, so that's just kind of basic idea. And also the order of it matters, right? So middleware A has to be executed before middleware B. So if you're ordering something and it's not, it's, they don't have available, uh, they don't have it available. They have to tell you it's not available right away. They can just like go to the kitchen and like do all the work and they say, hey, like we missed this ingredient. Uh, so this, the order of the execution is important here. Um, does Express make sense? We'll kind of go back to the picture. Uh, if anybody has a questions uh, and once we get to the live coding, it'll make more sense. But if you have any theoretical questions, go ahead. So it's basically just a way to uh, send API requests. Uh, not necessarily. So Express is more is the way we process those requests. Uh, so the way we send requests is a little bit different because uh, we can like send them through the command line or through the postman. Express actually works through that request and performs all the operations on it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Is it like a way to order the stuff that we want to perform on the on the request? So like, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. So as I said, like essentially like it's it's just a sequence of the functions that are being executed in an order. So for example, if you would like to perform some sort of check, for example, if the ingredients are there for the food, you could put that function in the beginning. And then if it's there, you can proceed to the next to the next function, which is essentially will cook your food. But if you don't, if you don't have the ingredients in the first place, it will actually won't proceed to the next function. And as I said, like you can order it the way you want it, uh, and the order matters. And the order is essentially the the order in which is going to be executed. Okay. Um, part of slide. To the slides on the picture download. Um, okay, uh, so I'll just explain it without the, the picture. I know what happened. Um, so, ORM is just another thing that we're going to be using. Um, just by definition, ORM is object relational mapper. Uh, in a nutshell, what it is is that ORM is just the wrapper around a database and the query language. So for example, if you want to select some records from the database, you can use, so for example, if you use SQL, right? You, you can use raw SQL, which would say like select star from users, which will essentially give you all the users from the database. But the thing is SQL is extremely powerful language and not a lot of people really know all the power tools of it. So instead of it, you could use ORM, which is essentially some sort of wrapper which will perform all the same operations, but in most cases, it would do it more efficiently than if you would uh, do it yourself. So like right here on the bottom, there's a picture. So it says example, uh, user ORM users. So essentially just getting a table of users where email is equal to test at test.com. So this will give you uh, all, the, all the users with the email at test uh, at test.com. 
So you can and you can also do it in any language, right? So you don't need if you go, for example, write in C plus plus. If you write in Java, if you write in Python, there are all RAMs for everything. So you don't need to know the SQL or NoSQL uh, queries. You can actually just write it in a in a native language you're working on. Uh, so does that make sense? Okay. Okay, great. And we'll see, we'll see once we start working with ORM today with type ORM, I'll kind of tie it all together, uh, make sense uh, what's going on. Um, so let's actually jump into the live coding now. And uh, I would start by showing off the set of the issues that I've created on the backend board. Uh, so the rate my course backend repo that I created last time and the board that I did. This time I just create the issues um, before the session. So essentially today we want to accomplish four things. So we want to add the ability to add cores to the database. We want to add uh, ability to retrieve info about the course. Uh, we want to add the ability to retrieve info about all the courses that are there. And we also want to add the ability to rate the course. Uh, so that's kind of four main um, routes uh, issues that we're going to be working on today. And um, feel free to follow along. It's not a lot of us here. Uh, so if you would like to follow along, feel free and uh, we could just pause and uh, I can explain or we can try to debug it together. Uh, so it's more efficient for everybody and just you'll get something useful out of this. Um, so yeah, so let's just dive in uh, into the code. Uh, let's open up the terminal. So I will just go to the directory where my project is at. Um, okay. Does that make sense? So, and then I'll just open the code that we have. So first, since we just copied uh, everything from a template, we have to do a little bit of a cleanup uh, because there was a lot of stuff that we don't actually need. Um, good stuff. I just need to uh, restart the, the editor. Uh, so first, uh, first we'll just do cleanup and I'll try to explain how the overall structure of the project works. Uh, so the main, uh, the core of the entire application is essentially an index.ts. Uh, we create the connection to the to the database, and once that connection is initialized, and when we actually initialize our express route, uh, the way we initialize is just initiating, just calling a function express, and then the way that the express works, as I said, is just a bunch of middle words that chain up together, and that's essentially what it is here. It's just a middle word that parses the body of the request here. Uh, and don't worry too much about what exactly body, body parser does. Just think of it when you send some data to the backend, you need some sort of way to parse it. Uh, that's essentially what it is. Uh, this routes part we won't need. Uh, so I'm just going to delete this um, and we're gonna register it ourselves. Uh, then once we um, add up all the middlewares, in our case, just one, this one, we actually listen. So we expose the server to outer word and listen on a port uh, 3000. Uh, here it's also uh, inserting some data into the database. We don't need that. Uh, so we can just comment this out for now. We might need it later on. And then once you start, you just wanna kind of have a console log which says you start on this board and uh, open this to see results. We don't need this either. Uh, so the, essentially the whole, the core of how our, our express is behaving is going to be in this index.ts file. Um, and then here, uh, essentially, here are uh, two additional things that we'll use. So first one is entities. That's essentially our um, our models. Uh, no, actually, I can, let me make it one screen so it's easier. Uh, so models. So we have entity. So right now, by default, I got user, but we'll make our own entities. So entities are just the tables, just the model of how our data going to be stored in a database. 
Uh, don't worry too much about the syntaxes. Uh, just here is the name of the fields and here are different types uh, of those fields. So you have first name, last name, age, and as I said, we'll change that. Um, and then the second part is where essentially all our logic going to be is the controller. So here, the way it's done is template, they initiate the class and then the class receives the access uh, to the database through the repository. And then it has a bunch of different methods, uh, which is all you can see retrieves all the records. One retrieve one record, saves, just saves the record and then removes the record. And um, we'll rewrite it to be more functional. Uh, I don't really use classes in JavaScript. Uh, so we won't necessarily need this either, but we'll use the syntaxes here as an example. Uh, so the good thing about the templates, they have some basic examples that we can just later on um, reuse when we're writing our own code. Um, and then it has this routes TS file, we don't need it, we can just delete it for now. And uh, just kind of the basic idea about NPM projects, it has the package.json, which is essentially describes all the dependencies, dependencies, dependencies of the projects. Like you would have a CMake list um, and uh, also it describes different uh, scripts and command you can be running. So this one in our case is just start the one that starts the, the web server. And then you also have all, all the dependencies actually on your local machine in node modules. Um, so that's kind of just basic of it, or what's the overall project structure is. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, can you talk a little bit about the difference between package.json and node modules? Yeah, yeah. So, so essentially the way it is uh, done, so package.json is your config file. Right, so for example, we one of our dependencies right here is express. So when we install the dependencies, we need to sort of have some record which dependencies we, we install. So that's what package JSON is essentially like a book which stores the dependencies that we use in our project. But just because it stores the information that we use this dependency doesn't, doesn't mean that we actually have this dependency installed on our machine. So once we install, install the dependency on our machine uh, and we can do that with NPM install, those dependencies go in node modules. So node modules is essentially all the, and if we open it, you can kind of see like, like hundreds of different folders, but all of it is essentially all the NPM dependencies that it needs uh, to run the project. Um, so you don't want to, you essentially just want to have it locally so you can start up the project. Um, but you, you don't want to like push it to, to, the, uh, to the GitHub, for example. Did that make sense? Okay, perfect. Um, so let's we'll just, uh, we'll just dive in. Uh, let's, let's go back to the, to the board and pick the first issue uh, that we're going to be tackled. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pick this one, ability to add course. Uh, and I kind of wrote a small user story as a user when I take a class that's under the system, I want to be able to add it so that I can provide rating to it. And then kind of uh, short requirements, what we want, we want to post route to API version one courses. So we want to post route because post is used for the resource creation. And now let me explain why we're going to be using API version one courses. So when you design your APIs, uh, first of all, you wanna have some versioning. Uh, so that's why we're using, we're using version one. If we wouldn't have versioning uh, 10 years down the road, if, if we, for example, want to do version two, uh, it will be extremely hard to migrate because uh, if you just make a call to API slash courses, uh, you will have to refactor all the clients that are using that and you have to put in version in there. But if we specify the version, all the clients have to do, they can just update the version or, and, but uh, meanwhile, the old one will still be supported. Um, so the whole idea of having like a version control and also ability to support the version one if we do end up migrating to version two. Um, and then the second part, so don't worry about API, it's just kind of uh, just usually how it's called because you might not have API. There are some different routes that could be, that could be on, on a backend. 
the courses is essentially the resource. So in our case, we want to be able to create the course. So we want to specify the resource that we're trying to create. And the way it's usually done, it's, um, it's usually named uh, in plural. Um, and there's just kind of a standard convention. You, you don't really want to name it in, this, in, in a single form because this route could also serve as the ability to retrieve all the courses. And then if you add the parameter, you can retrieve the single course. Um, so that's kind of just, just, just a standard convention uh, for using uh, plural resource name. Um, so let's actually make this route. Uh, does anybody have questions before I start making the routes? So we have this one route, right? Like uh, API slash version one slash courses. We can send different types of requests to, to retrie retrieve different information, right? Yes, yes. Essentially the whole idea is you want to make things as reusable as possible. So one of ways, of course, you can design it is you can just have like, a route which you will call create resource, or and you can have another route which will be get resources, or you can have another route which called get resource. So the whole idea is that you'll have three separate routes, and what if you have like for example twenty different entities, and each has three three separate routes that you're not really able to reuse as much, you will essentially have to have like a giant file. And it just gets very disorganized. It gets very messy. Uh, so it's just kind of a convention that you want to keep just to have everything organized and reuse the route for the different methods. OK, perfect. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, making off the model of the course, kind of the entity that I talked about. And the way I usually approach it, I usually just go with the design and see what fields are there. Uh, so let's go to Figma uh, and there's just the design that I had last time um, for the rate my course. So we want to be able to add a course. <clears throat> and uh, let's just look right here. So this is kind of like a card of a course. We can see it has the name, uh, right? CS50. It also has like CS, which is, I would assume is a department. And then it has like a must, which is essentially like, is it required or is it, or is it not required? And then we have um, different ratings. So, but ratings will be a separate entity. So essentially all we would need is just the name of the course, uh, the department of the course, and if it's required or not. Um, and then let me just go to the second page and just check if there is any other information that we would need. Um, has the average rating, but as I said, rating will be a separate entity, so we don't need to worry about it. Um, so as I said, name, department, and maybe maybe we'll also add the description uh, just for the sake of it, because the course could have a description like we have on yes, and then we'll add department and if it's required or not. Um, so now let's go back um, to, the, to the code go back to the entity. So the way I like to do and write code in general, I like to reuse as much of the existing code as possible. So you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you just want to see the code that's already been written and just kind of reuse it. So we already have the user. So why don't we just reuse it? So let's rename this to a course um, and then rename the class to a course. And then we have the ID, which is essentially just internal ID that's being stored in the database. Um, and then now we'll just add the fields that we have. So it will be name of the course, which is going to be a string. Then we'll have a description of the course. Um, then we'll have a department. And then we'll, uh, we'll also have if it's required or not. Uh, so that's essentially our our model for the course. It has the ID, name, description, department, and if it's required or not. Um, does, did, does it make sense how I made the model based on the data uh, that we're planning on storing? Okay, okay, perfect. So now let's go and actually define the route. Uh, so the way you define the routes in the Express you reference the Express app 
and then you just give the give the method of the route. Uh, so in our case, we want to be able to create the resource. So we'll be using post, as I said, and then it receives to it receives essentially. I would say like essentially two parameters. So first parameter is the URL that you're going to be able to retrieve the request. And second one is essentially a function um, that is going to handle this request. So as I said, we're gonna be using API version one uh, courses. And then the function that's going to handle it, uh, we can just call it uh, create course. Uh, and we don't have it yet. So we just essentially define a post route to API version one courses, and it will be handled by the function called create course. Um, so let me save this and uh, let's now create that function. So the way uh, I usually create the, uh, so I like to make everything as functional as possible. Um, and I usually just create the controller uh, which is just the file and I store all the functions for that specific controller in that file. So I go to controller, I create a new file, we'll call it courses, controller TS, and I just empty file right now. And here is where we would want to reuse uh, some of the code that's already been giving us in the classes. Um, so for example, you could see the like, let's take the save function. It's async function that takes in the request and it also has the parameter of response and it also has a parameter of the next. And uh, request is kind of obvious is what you receive, response is what you're giving back. And next is kind of the express thing, that middleware part of you being able to actually pass down, uh, pass your data down the chain um, and then being able to invoke the next uh, function in that chain. So that's what the next function is used for. So let's actually copy and paste this function uh, and we'll reuse this. Um, so we call this function, let me see how we call it. We call it create course. Uh, so we create course function um, and we can actually make it uh, export async. So we'll make async. Uh, export async cons. Um, just try to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so that's the way usually would initialize functions in JavaScript. Um, name, uh, then you assign it to some sort of function. Error is essentially the same as function. Uh, it's just kind of easier to read what's going on. And then we don't it kind of highlights for me. So if you have good extension in your editor, kind of tells you if you don't have it. Uh, so once again, I go back to user controller and I export this, import these dependencies. Uh, so all everything that's on top is just the dependencies that we need to execute the code. Uh, and we also need express. Uh, So that's done. So create course is where we're going to be uh, using, a, uh, here is where we're going to create the, the course. So let's kind of talk this through. So what's going to happen? Uh, so someone wants to create the course. So they send the data into the request. Uh, so first, what we need to do is that retrieve data from the request object, right? Because we don't know what data has to be uh, inserted. Then we kind of need to create our model, the entity course that we created. So create entity course with the data that um, has been passed in in the request. And then once we create that course, we actually need to insert and into the database. So insert entity course into the database. All right, so that's kind of like a, a quick overview uh, so let's let's retrieve the data uh, from the from the request, and the request is essentially just an object, and it would have a body because the way you would pass the data in any request will be through the body. Uh, so the way you can do it in JavaScript, you can destructure the element. Um, so essentially, you have a request dot body, um, and then you can so here is for example, if we we'll, would we'll pass in the name, we can reference it dot name. Right, so we'll have const name, 
uh, is equal to request.body.name. And then we can have a description the same way. And then it will be description. So if you, for example, if you're retrieving like 15 different, uh, 15 different parameters uh, fields from your request, it gets very annoying to type request.body every time. So the way you can simplify it in JavaScript, you just do con const. And then you just have this curly brackets and you just say name description and you set it equal to the request.body, right? Uh, and then this is not necessary anymore. And this is automatically what, so this name is essentially a request.body.name and this description is request.body.description. And let's just take all the fields that we would need. So we would need name, description, department, and required. So name description, department, and required. So we retrieve all the fields. So now let's actually create the uh, create the, the entity of the course. So const new course. And I'm using const. Um, in JavaScript, everything is pretty much the con like const. So don't, don't think of it as like something immutable that like never changes. Uh, think of it as something, it's just the way JavaScript works. You pretty much always want to make everything const unless you, you would use let also to modify the resource, but essentially the way JavaScript works is you just use const for everything. Uh, and it will actually modify. It's actually not const under the hood. Um, so we'll initiate the new class. There is a quick question in the chat. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Yeah. yeah so Chupa is asking, what if you wanted to rename one of the variables? during the restructuring? Yes, yeah, so that's uh, that's the great question. Uh, so for example, sometimes you could have a collapse of the variables. Uh, so the way you rename them, you just put uh, two dots and then you just give it a new name. So you can just do course name right there. I believe that that should work. And then you can just use a course name instead of a name. Um, so is it like the body contains the field that it, the, the name of which is course name and you assign it to the name name variable, right? Um, the opposite. So the body contains the field name, but you actually want, want it to be the course name. So you're actually assigning the name field that's inside of the request body to the course name, if that makes sense. So uh, it's the same. So since Chuk asked, it's the same if you would name what course name is equal request dot body dot name. And so that's that's the same thing. You can call it name, you can call it anything, but when you do structure, it's a little bit not very trivial to understand that you can just name it the way you want it. So that's the way you would you would name it. You would provide the original name. Um, and then that kind of refers here to the body. And then you can specify the new name that you want to be used. Yeah. Also, like when you were uh, when you were sending the post request, you were you did not include the ID. Is it because like we don't have one? Uh, just send the information in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So if we go back to the course, the ID is essentially it's a self-generated entity by the database. So when we create the resource, we can override that ID, but we don't really want to because uh, it's easier for us to give that job to the database. So the database can generate those IDs for us. So they're unique. So for example, if we want to insert ID one, and then like, I don't know, next day we want to insert ID one again, it actually won't let us because ID is unique object. You need something that would, um, that would allow you to preserve the, that specific record's uniqueness. So ID is just, ID just does that for you. Uh, so you don't have to specify it and you don't pass it um, in, your, in your data when you try to create the course. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I'll get rid of this. Uh, so here we'll just uh, initiate. So we'll go back, create entity course with the data that has been passed in. So new course, and we'll actually let's import the model. Uh, import, and let me see how they import it. Yep, so import course. 
Uh, and if, if uh, as I said, like if you use a lot of, if you use TypeScript and use uh, extensions, uh, it's just a very easy way uh, of kind of knowing where everything is located. So you don't have to like, sometimes it's also auto imports uh, for me. So for example, if I do command dot, it says import course. So it auto imports for me. So I don't have to do anything. Uh, so that's like one of the, one of the greatest uh, benefits of the, of the TypeScript, TypeScript. So now let's actually assign the data. So we initializing the entity object uh, and we say new course name is equal to the name. Uh, and then new course description is equal to the description. And then new course department is equal to department. Um, and then new course required is equal to the required. Uh, so now we initialize it, initialize that entity um, with the fields that we received. So now we just need to insert that entity to the database. And the way we're going to be doing that, we'll just look at what's being done. So the way they do it, they retrieve the user repository and they just save it. Uh, so we will do exactly the same thing. And I'll explain right now what user repository actually has right here. I didn't notice. So what user repository is. Um, so just get it here. Uh, I like to put it on top of a function, um, const. So here is this get repository function, uh, which is type ORM nat native function. Uh, essentially think of it as get table. Uh, so you, we have a course table and we want to be able to have some sort of uh, like a pointer to the table that is able to perform different operations on that table. So we can actually call it a user, uh, a course table, because in our case, it's a course. So course table, we retrieve it with a specific entity and different ORMs uh, do it differently, but repository is a very common, common name. Uh, and then now we want to perform operation on that data, on that table. Uh, and the way we do it is just course table save and we would pass in the object that we just initialized. So we'll just pass in the new course. And the way JavaScript works is everything is uh, asynchronous. So it doesn't, have, it, doesn't, it doesn't wait on the execution of this line. It would proceed to the next one. So in order for us to actually await for that uh, execution to be completed, we would just use a, a, a wait word. Um, don't, don't worry too much about a sync away. You, it's not a very trivial concept to get, but think about it as just, you want this line to be executed before any other line is being executed after that. And the reason we're doing that is that the, at the end of the create request, you actually want to return the resource that you just created. So if you actually haven't executed this line and you're trying to return the, the new course, um, it will it will return it because we initialize it, but it won't return the ID. So you actually need to ID uh, because then you could use that ID, for example, on your front end when you're trying to redirect that specific course. Uh, and I think once we hook up the once we hook up the front end, uh, you guys will make more sense why we need that ID. Now you you will just probably think like why don't we just return the new course uh, instead of just like waiting until it's being saved. Uh, but that's just the way it's done and we do need the ID and we do need to await until it's being saved because also it could not save, right? So for example, like what if your database goes down and you're not able to save that new course, then you actually return something that doesn't even exist. Uh, and the client thinks, oh, okay, like I just inserted a new course, but it was actually never persisted to database. So it's actually not in the database. Um, so you want to like 100% be certain that's actually it is in the database. And then once that happens, we can just return um, the, uh, the new object and the way it does uh, done in Express, you just do rest.json response, essentially .json, um, and then you just pass in the new course. So that's, that's our function of how we are creating the, the course. Uh, do all parts of it make sense? This is probably the hardest one because retrieval one is a little bit easier. Will the save function like automatically populate the ID field? Yes. So the save function automatically will populate the field. Um, 
So essentially it will take all your data, which is your course entity object, it will insert it, and then it will automatically populate that ID in the new course. Uh, for some ORMs, for example, you would uh, have to do something like this. You would actually have to get back the resource it's retrieving. So insert a course, for example. Um, in this case, I don't. you don't need to. Uh, you can actually do that because it returns a promise and the course. Uh, so we can do that too. Uh, we can just actually get what's being returned that function and actually give that back to user. Or we can just return the new course. Um, so it's just, I mean, we can do both. Different ORMs do it differently. Uh, I've done it both. Uh, this is kind of a cleaner way because you understand that's like, this is the object that's been inserted into the database and let's return this object back to the user. Okay, perfect. So let's let's actually hook up the, the function uh, to the to the index TS. Let me just copy this, uh, comment this out because we removed the user entities, so it will break. Um, let's go to index.ts and let's just remove all of this too because it's not being used. And as I said, create course is right here, the course. And as I said, we can auto import it. Um, it's just for me, it's command dot and it auto imports. If you want to do it manually, you can just import curly brackets, uh, create course from, and then you just kind of map to the controller. Courses control and it's going to be there. Uh, duplicate identifier because it was automatically already. Okay, so important. So here's pretty much is. So right now we, so what we did, we created the post request to API version one courses, and we gave it the, the function that's the handler of that uh, post request. And we created that, that function to handle all the operations. So let's actually try and see if it works. And the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to use Postman. So let's spin up our server uh, the same way we did last time, npm run start. Um, okay, so it has Express Server has started on port 3000. Uh, so that's great. So let's go to Postman. Uh, Postman is essentially just a tool that allows you to send the API requests. Uh, so as we remember, we listen on a port 3000 and the route is API version one and we do courses, All right? And let's provide the body. Uh, uh, so the body will be, uh, let me see. So essentially that's all the fields that we need. So name description department required. Uh, so we can just copy it in here. Uh, and then we can provide the values. So required, we will say true. Uh, let's do CS uh, 1101, 1101. And then description, we can provide introduction to computer science. And then department, we can put computer science, computer science. So provided the data in the body of the, of the request, and then we need to change that data to the post. Now, actually, let's try to send this. Okay, so it's return, it gave us an error, cannot post API version one courses. Uh, so let's actually see what happened if we set it up incorrectly. Um, create API, sometimes it needs a dash, maybe that's the reason. Mm, no. uh, okay, so the way... Um, maybe you need to restart the server. Like, yes, yes, right? yes, let's restart the server. So we started to start again. Yep, so I just needed a dash. So we actually just inserted the record. So we get back that ID and we get back that same information. 
Uh, let's now actually check the database if we inserted this into database. So the way I do it, I use Robo 3T. Uh, I set up this connection uh, to local localhost 27017, and I have this rate my course database. I think that that's going to be it. Uh, it might be not it. Uh, it's a different courses. Okay, so the way uh, I'll just refresh this. This may not. This might be a little bit outdated as I was running different. Uh, Tests. So the way we define the database is actually in that ORM config.json. So let's actually, I so I, I made the database test. So we don't really want to make a test. So let's just rename and rate my course uh, local, for example. So that's going to insert, it's going to create, rate my course local database for you and it's going to insert record there for you. So let's restart the server. Um, and then let's let's create that course again. It will just post to different database. Uh, and then now let's refresh the connections and we can see you rate my course local collections course. And here is the course that we just inserted. So it has name, description department required and it has the ID of the database. So that means that our route is actually working uh, and it's actually inserting the record and the database is persisting and it's returning that record back to us. Does that make sense? Kind of how, how we did this, how we also tested that it worked. Um, okay. Okay, great. So let's, let's continue with other routes. Uh, let me check what's next on the GitHub board. And it says ability to retrieve info about a course. So as a student, when I choose classes for next semester, I want to be able to see information about a single course so that I can decide if I should take it or not. So it's just a simple get, re get request to the API version one courses and then course ID. And then let me actually create it. And then I'll talk through what's the course ID parameter is. So the, we're using get request because that's what's retrieving the, the record. Uh, so let's actually make it here. So app.get um, and I'll just copy and paste. So we use the same, the same convention API version one courses. And then the way we would want to reference that specific course that we want to retrieve is by the ID of that specific course. And the way it's done in Express you just define it uh, with the two dots and you actually give it a name. And um, then you will be able to actually reference that parameter in that handle function uh, that we also going to create. Uh, so that's just one of the ways of passing the parameter uh, to the request. You, you, could, you, you would probably ask like, why don't we just pass it in a body? So you can actually pass it in a body uh, so with the get request, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, sometimes actually it's not recommended for a get to have a body. Uh, get would pretty much like never have a body. Some, some connections also can block that body. So for the get request, instead you wanna pass the parameters and the URL itself. And that's essentially what we're doing here. Um, and then we'll uh, create the, the function get single course. Does that make sense about the URL? Uh, okay, okay, perfect. So let's create this this function called get get single course. Uh, so let's go right here and let's actually the easiest thing I always do. I just copy and paste stuff, and then I just rename things. So create course. I get get single course, um, and then I would need the database again. I actually don't have any any body anymore. Um, and then I actually not creating anything anymore. So I can just get rid of this. And then uh, I'll essentially use this, but I won't be using save. I'll actually be using find. So find um, is just um, one of the ways of finding records in the database. And there are multiple ways. You can either return it as an array or you can return it as a single object. So I just do a single object, why not? Uh, we do find one. And here is where we provide the parameters to which it should find the record. 
And that's where we are going to use our our course ID that we that we provided in the URL. So we just do cons course ID and it will be in your request params dot course ID like this. So essentially this request params it express recognizes that course ID that we going to provide in the URL it's actually a parameter. So we are actually able to retrieve it uh, and then use it in our find well function. Uh, so here we just put ID and then course ID. And then um, we can just name this to course and we'll return the scores back. So we got the table, we got the course ID from the URL and then we found the specific record and then we're just returning this record back to user. Uh, so pretty simple. Uh, nothing complex. Uh, so let's actually try and test it. Let's restart the server. Um, okay, so it threw an error, uh, happens sometimes. Uh, okay, and I would know why, because we haven't imported in index.ts uh, the, the course. So now I auto imported it. Let's restart again. Okay, it's working. And then now let's actually use this idea of the course that we just created and let's try to retrieve information about it. So we'll send a get request, API version one courses and the course ID. Send kit send and it didn't return anything. Okay, uh, so we just got some sort of bug potentially. So let's just, not, nothing in a log. Uh, let's look in here, what could be going on wrong. Um, so find one conditions. Uh, so the way I, I like to debug it's probably this object is empty. Uh, I would assume sometimes there are some uh, conversion errors. Dimitri? Um, yes. Um, I think find one accepts an ID only. Okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, then that, that's probably it. Uh, that could be it. So let's try that. Also, the name of the field was object ID. Maybe that was the problem. Uh, the, the inner entities? Yeah. No, oh, so, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so object ID is the type. And then object ID column is just the type of the, of the kind of column. And then the field itself, the name is ID. Yeah, makes sense, sorry. Um, yeah, no worries, no worries at all. So let's try this, find one. And then the way they also did it here on a user control when I looked, is they just did find one and then just pass the ID. So that's, I could have just reused the code. So no need to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. So thank you, Saeed. Uh, so we changed this, let's actually re restart the server and let's uh, try it out. Okay, so here it is. So it actually works now. Uh, so we were able to retrieve the record, ID, name, description, department required, everything we provided, we can return the body so it doesn't, that, you don't think it's maybe returning the same thing. Try it again, it's returning us uh, returning us the record. Uh, so that's that, that route is done now. Uh, let's go and let's actually be able, uh, let's, let's retrieve all the courses. Uh, let's go at the edge of GitHub issue that we made. Uh, ability to retrieve info about all courses and we want to do get to API version one courses. Uh, and that's kind of back to the Elias question of the, how you can use multiple methods on the same route. Um, so let's let's make it. Uh, does anybody have questions before I make this route uh, about the get request and how we retrieve the data from the database? Okay, great. So let's uh, let's get all the courses. So same thing. I just a lot to copy and paste stuff so you don't have to waste time doing anything yourself and then get all courses. Uh, so here we can go back to the controller, uh, then copy the paste the same function and then we can call it get all courses. And here we want to have ID and act, let's actually see how they retrieved all of them. They actually did just, just find just empty find that returns all the courses. So here we'll just erase this and just use find and thus will be courses and we will return all the courses. 
Um, so let's restart the server. Uh, and then it didn't work because I haven't imported. Uh, so I import it. Now let's restart again. Let's insert another course because otherwise we might think that it's just returning uh, this the only course that we have in the database. So let's let's insert a new one. So let's insert 2201. So that's data structures. And then everything else is the same. So we send a post request, it returned. Um, the object that we just inserted and let's actually retrieve all the courses. So we get get. So now we retrieve all the courses and we actually got both CS1101, CS2201. So that means our route is working and it's able to retrieve all the courses. Um, so that's great. Uh, one refactor that we can do right as we hear is that sometimes in the index TS, it gets cumbersome to have all of these routes. So you can actually an express split it and have a separate file where you would have routes defined for that specific entity. So you could see like API version one courses, we're using it everywhere. And if we have to make like 50 more routes and we have to copy and paste it everywhere, it just gets very cumbersome because you know that all of these routes are for the courses resource. So instead we can just refactor it. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, we'll make a routes folder and then we'll make a course routes TS file. And here is what, what Express allows us. It allows us to define some sort of inner router, right? So uh, we can inner route uh, from after, so we can allow index TS to route API version one courses to a sub route. And then that sub route will actually take care of all the, of all the other routes uh, that's, that's coming after that dash, for example. Um, so, and you'll see once we do it. Uh, so the way we do it is that we import the express uh, and then we make a router. Uh, so as I said, think of it as like inner router, uh, express dot so express that router. And then here, and then we also want to export that router. Uh, so not, well, now let's actually copy paste this um, right here. But then now we will use router instead of an app. But now we will actually, we'll actually give it up to index TS to do all the logic with API version one courses. And all we have to worry about is everything that comes after it. So we can just erase this part. We just erase this part. And all we care about is the, what's coming after this. And we can auto import everything. And then in index.ts, we don't have to do this anymore. All we have to do is we need to import the router. So import um, all as core sys router. Oh, yeah. Routes, courses dot routes. And then here we can do app use. And then we take this first part that's being reused across all the routes. And we can just set route this specific route to the sub route, which is a courses route. Um, and that's now, and then after that, the course router will handle everything that's going to come after the, after the courses. Um, so let's actually try it um, and feel free to ask questions if that was confusing on any parts, but there's just a way uh, you would refactor um, in Express. So it didn't work. It says port router. Yes, I probably didn't report the router. Um, express the router. Uh, sometimes uh, with JavaScript, sometimes it doesn't tell you exactly uh, which things to import. So I I just go to documentation uh, and look it up what we need to import. Has express router right here, so that's the way I just 
initialize it wrong, it actually has to be uh, capitalized. So like that, uh, let's restart the, the, the server. Um, Mongo, so this says requires a middle for function but got an object. Okay, middleware function but got an object. So that could be another import thing here at index.ts. That could be import course router from routes, course routes. Let's try again. Yep, so that, that was it. And so let's try to get all the routes again. So that's still working. Uh, let's try to retrieve a single route. Uh, so we'll just reuse one of the IDs from here and then try to retrieve a single route. So that still works. And then let's try to create the, the another class. So we we'll have 2212 uh, discrete structures. Uh, we'll create this and it still works. So we did a very brief refactor of the router to make it all nice and concise and all the routes are still working. And uh, now our code looks much better because now we just have one line instead of having all these three lines. And it's much easier to organize when you would have like multiple domains. Does the refactor make sense? Okay, perfect. So let's, let's jump back to our final route. Um, and the final route is going to be able to create the, the ratings. Uh, so, and since we started this kind of sort of refactor, we'll do the same with the rate ratings from the beginning. Um, so let's start from the index TS and define the path. Uh, so we ratings and then we'll be ratings router. And then we'll just define a new router here. I just copy and paste stuff to the ratings. Um, then we only need a post request, which is essentially going to create rating. Uh, and then we'll out import everything. Once we, once we create the function itself, save everything. So let's make the actually the entity of the rating and define all the fields uh, that it would store. Uh, so we'll call it rating, and then we'll just copy and paste the course. And let's actually look at the design and see what 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 fields does rating has. So it's right here. So the rating would have like a professor, um, and then we'll have a mark, and also we have a nice model right here. So actually, like the rating of the course itself, the difficulty of the course would you take this course again and just the professor name? So all we need is just these four basic fields. Um, and then we can also, we can also, since right here, I could see like it has like some sort of like small comment, we can also add a comment field to it too. Uh, so let's actually do that. Uh, so it says uh, professor, uh, this will be actual rating. Um, and then we have difficulty, just going to be a number. Uh, then we have a take again, and we'll have a short comment. Uh, and the order of these fields, that doesn't matter. You can define them in any order. That's why I'm just kind of being very arbitrary in the way I do it. And then uh, we now we have the entity, and let's actually create the ratings controller, ratings controller, let's copy the paste the create course function because it's very similar to what we would need uh, just for the ratings. Uh, we will call it create rating. Uh, we would actually use the rating object and we use the rating table. Uh, now we'll have a little slightly different fields. It will be professor comment, so professor, comment, uh, difficulty, rating, and uh, comment take again. 
click again. And then we'll initialize the rating um, object instead. So it'll be new rating. And then for the new rating, we'll just assign all the fields. Uh, that we would need. So we need professor right here and comment. And then the final state again. And now we just insert that into the rating table. Insert the rating and then insert the rating. So very similar to what we do with the course, just different fields. Um, so now let's actually auto import everything. So it works. Create rating and then index DS. Add missing function. So that just didn't auto import. So ratings. Ratings routes. Uh, let's actually make this single. Uh, go like this, and then it says local declaration. Not sure. Oh, okay, just declare the function for me. Okay, so here I did pretty much the same thing as we did with the create course, but with creating the rating. Um, and we don't need any of this anymore. So let's actually test this out. Uh, let's actually, let me copy the fields so I don't forget the fields. Um, go to Postmates, send the post request to ratings and provide, so professor and then comment and then difficulty um, and then rating and then take again. So let's go. So our professor going to be Daniel Arena, uh, and then comment great prof, and then difficulty we can say two, and rating we would say five, and then take again is true. Uh, so let's restart our server, and let's try to insert that rating. Um, Send. There is a question in the chat. Can we send 4.5 as a rating? 4.5. Well, let's actually try. That's a great question. So we are <laughs> able to to create. Yeah, let's actually try with the number. I think it might not work, uh, but let's see. I mean, JavaScript sometimes does crazy things. So, so let's insert 4.5. So it actually works. And then we can check the database. We refresh. Uh, it's actually didn't show 4.5. Um, so yeah, so now we pretty much have all our routes um, configured. Um, the only thing else that we have is we actually want to have ratings per course. Um, so for each specific uh, for each specific course, we want to be able to retrieve the rating. And the way we do it is uh, we actually would define an additional field. Uh, it, will, it won't be a column, it would just be a rating, for example, for the single course, and it would be a rating object. And then when we retrieve the course, all we'll have to do is we'll just have to populate, um, populate that, um, that course with, with the rating. And what I forgot to do is when you insert the rating, you actually want to specify ID of the course because otherwise you have no idea, um, you have no idea which course you're inserting uh, the rating is for. So uh, it will be object ID column and it will be course and it will be object actually will be the course object. Um, and then once we insert the rating, uh, we, we first would need to retrieve. I think we can just, we can retrieve. Also, we can just use the ID. I'm thinking if we can just pass the ID of the course and that would work too. So 
create the course, so create the rating. And then here we'll also take in the course ID. Uh, so new rating course, and that will be course ID. Um, so let's try that because you essentially, you wanna have some connection. You don't wanna just insert the rating just for the sake of inserting the rating. And uh, we did have- You wrote down comment there instead of course. Uh, maybe that, that might be a problem. Well, let me see. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that would be a course. So yeah. So we want to link the rating to some specific course. We don't just want to to make the rating without without specifying the course. Um, so this that's we need to establish some sort of relationship. Uh, so let's let's actually try this and see if it's going to work. Uh, so I'll calm this out for now. Uh, restart the server. And then let's, so let's retrieve the, the courses that we have, right? And we have this 1101, so we put ID there and then let's post the rating with the course ID now. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that worked. And let's refresh the database. And we see that now we have a course and this is the ID that the course that it has. So that's not the nicest way uh, that we could do it. Uh, in some cases, we could also preload the object itself, but I think that's fine uh, for the sake of it right now. Um, so it kind of has the ID insert as a string uh, even though um, provide us the object ID. We can also, one of the way, maybe we can specify it as a course object ID column and then see if that's going to actually insert the course itself. Uh, so just not, not very critical, but just one way of, uh, of improving. Uh, so it's actually a little bit nice in database. Let's try to insert. And then let's refresh. Um, refresh. No, still ID. Yeah, so not 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 a big deal. But now we actually associating a uh, rating or uh, rating with some specific course. So now when we have when we have um, when we have courses, we can actually add the ratings uh, to that specific course, um, and then. And then, then we can show the the user the specific rating per course. Um, so the way we do it is that we just add a new field called ratings, and that will just be an array of ratings. And once we retrieve the the course, we will populate that that field with ratings. So we can do uh, we will use the rating table. Um, and then we'll find uh, const all ratings per course. And that would be just finding the courses, uh, finding the ratings for that specific course. Uh, I'll just use find. And the way we use it, we'll just course and then we'll specify course ID in here. Yes, we can just do that. And then once that done, we just populate the ratings field with that specific courses. So hopefully that works. Um, so restart the server. Um, does does it have to be an object or do we just pass, uh, pass the ID? We pass the ID usually. Uh, yeah, so you want you want you want to pass. Uh, it can be the object. Uh, it depends. So sometimes the object would work, uh, but usually you would pass the ID. So you want in that specific rating ratings table, you want you want to find the one. Uh, you want to find the ones that actually have that that course ID. So, you, but you can also pass the pass the course itself. Um, so I think just in this case, the way we insert it, I think you do need to have an ID. Uh, 
you can just have the you have you can just have the course itself. So under the hood, the the ORM will perform uh, all the operations for you. But in in the end of the day, they're going to be searching by the ID. They're not going to be searching by the by the object. Um, so yeah, so let's let's try that uh, course. Let's retrieve the single course. Yep, so here it is. We retrieve the course and that course has all the ratings that we just inserted for that course. So when we retrieve that course later on, on the front end, it has all the ratings right away and uh, we can show them. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, we can also add the ratings for all the courses. Um, if you guys are interested in how to do that, um, it's a little bit more uh, JavaScript uh, sugar syntax, but um, we would also need that. And I also, uh, I also in the GitHub, in the repository, I pushed the completed version of this workshop. So it's called uh, session two done. Uh, so if you're interested in just like getting the code and just poking around it, uh, just I'll just feel free to get this branch. I'll also probably merge it uh, to the master. Uh, so feel free just to poke around and see. I had a little bit more of enhancements in there. I also did a little bit of some uh, schema validation. Uh, so we actually providing, uh, we actually validating the fields uh, that we are giving to the backend, uh, but that's not necessarily a thing that we need to do right now. Um, do you all have any questions, concerns, um, just anything? There is a question in the chat. Uh, yes. how, how would you get the average rating for a course from all ratings? You don't have to code it. Yeah, yeah, so the average rating for a course from all the ratings. So essentially you would uh, you would query for all the ratings, right? So you will retrieve all the ratings and then you have to figure out how you're defining the average, right? If you if you just want to do the average, you would uh, you would pretty much like for loop over all those ratings and you would find the average. And then and then you can either do that logic on a backend, which is of course preferable or you can do that logic on a front end, which could be a bit slow when you have a lot of a lot of courses. But yeah, so you, the way you define the average, you do the logic, you iterate over the ratings, you calculate their average for those ratings, and then you, you give back that, that data to the user. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay, Ilya, are we sending a feedback form? Yeah, give me one second and I'll send the link. Okay. Should we ask questions in Slack? Yeah, yeah, feel free. If you have, uh, you also been edited to the Slack uh, for, for this workshop. So if you try to code along, uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested in other stuff, feel free just to drop a message there. I'll be more than happy to respond. Uh, point you to resources if uh, something doesn't make sense. So, and we can also pair code and debug uh, if you guys are trying just to kind of follow along and uh, repeat the same steps. You have a TA? <laughs> I don't have a TA. <laughs> Yeah, next next session we'll do do more do do front end, and then the session number four. Well, next session we'll figure out what we're we going to be doing for session number four. Um, so I'll send um. We'll send a tool so we can kind of brainstorm the ideas for the session four. So it's interesting for all of us um, to do the cool 
to do the cool features. Because I was uh, I was thinking a lot about like just doing authentication. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, so Ila sent a link in the chat. Uh, so feel free to leave the feedback. Uh, I really appreciate that really helps me uh, just get better and uh, make the sessions better for you all. Uh, so definitely fill this out um, once you get a chance. Okay, um, I think that's it. We'll just call it call it a day. Thank you all for coming, uh, and uh, have a great Saturday. Okay, yeah, thank you. For sure, man. Thanks, Dimitri. For sure, yeah. I'll see you on Monday. See ya.